reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. It's <laughs> 10. 10. Thank you. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the lamb shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples the nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Next reading is Psalm 72, verses 1 to 7 and verses 18 to 19. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people. Give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the, on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish, and peace abound until the moon is no more. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things, Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory for the whole earth. Amen and amen. You read the reading. I think Ellie's going to bring us our reading from Matthew. This reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet, prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey, People went out to him from Jerusalem, and all Judea, and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sudeces coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in the keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I can tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every day that does not, every tree that does not produce fruit, good fruit, will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
his winnowing fork in is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the shaft with unquenchable fire. This is the word of the Lord. Well, we continue uh, our series on Advent uh, this morning. If, uh, last week we were talking about how uh, we're, we're looking uh, for a leader. Uh, this week describes some of uh, what kind of leader we're looking for and some of how we actually prepare for this leader as he comes. Uh, I, I wonder as you think on your life, and uh, you think about all the things that occupy uh, life for you, uh, do you ask this question, where, where are my priorities? <laughs> What's important? Coming up to Christmas, I don't know about you, but Katie and I have been nutting our heads together trying to figure out presents for the kids. <laughs> and there's been a priority around that, sorting out presents. So, you know, when you order them online, because we're well practiced that over the last couple of years, you've got to make sure they ship in time and arrive. So, kids, you, you'll get something. <laughs> uh, where, where are your priorities at? Where's time going for you? Where are your thoughts going? Uh, what, what's a, a priority? If someone else was to look at our weeks, what would they say was really important to us? Uh, I think sometimes uh, the people would look at a, a modern person and say, well, to you it's really important that you have a clean house. It's, it's really important that you eat well, maybe you drink the best coffee, you eat the best food. Uh, they might say that about us. But that's where maybe our priorities are. But what's, what's the priority for God? Uh, when, when I look at my life, my priorities, do my priorities line up with the priorities of God? Uh, we find in these passages that the, a great priority for God is redemption. Redemption is the, the number one priority of God, that his, his people will be reconciled to him, uh, that we will be redeemed from a way of living that is contrary to his way of living, that uh, re redemption looks like justice being served, and so uh, people redeemed and reconciled in relationships. And so we have pictures of redemption through Scripture, and as we have pictures of redemption, we, we have a, a picture to, at the start of Isaiah. So if you want to follow along in Scripture, we're in Isaiah uh, chapter 11, and so you can pay, find that on page 558. We, we have pictures of uh, the kind of leader that would lead uh, God's redemptive uh, priorities in this world. And so we see this, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, uh, that is, through David's line, a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on, on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in fear of the Lord. What does that mean? To, to reverence what is important to God and to live that out with integrity. Isaiah as a book was uh, written into a people that hoped for the fulfillment of, of promise. They'd, they'd seen leaders like David, who came out of the, the, the stump of Jesse, uh, who failed, yet led a great time for the people of God. They've seen leaders like Solomon, who had all the wisdom in the world, uh, who led again a time of great prosperity for the people of God. And so Isaiah speaks into this memory of what it looked like for a nation to prosper, and, and says with great hope, a leader is coming who will lead in the, the same way that you saw in these people, from this line, uh, a leader is coming. So what's all this counsel, might, knowledge, and reverence of the Lord, delight of the Lord look like? Uh, what, does it, what does it produce? Well, if you're following along in the Bible, it says at the end of uh, verse 3, he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with the righteousness he shall judge the poor, decide with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill 
the wicked. Righteousness, he's built around his waist. Faithfulness, he's built around his loins. So the character of the leader, wise in understanding, uh, good counsel, able to make the right decisions. Uh, what he achieves uh, is not just dealing with what's in, in front of him, but, but actually uh, dealing with what the eye can't see and the ear can't hear to judge rightly. Uh, how often when we've done something wrong do we just want to state our case and say, actually, no, it's, it's not what you saw or it's not what you heard. And so we look for this kind of leader that is able to bring true justice. Uh, I wonder if you're the person in the argument that likes to have the last word, I, you know. Uh, I think we all do at some level because we want to state our cause. We, we want justice to occur. And so r redemption actually looks like justice happening, uh, not, not justice in the way of the world. The way justice uh, looks in this world is uh, we, we see wicked punished. Uh, we, we, but the way justice uh, looks like for God is that people will be redeemed, both those who perpetrate injustice as well as those who uh, are the victims of injustice. There's something inside of us that is from God that cries out for justice to happen. And only justice can happen when uh, people see the whole story. And, and we know in the world that we live in, no one ever sees the full story, whether it's the full story of what's happening in war across the other side of the world, or whether it's the full story of what's happening uh, among celebrities uh, around us. So, so we long for the kind of leader that can lead with counsel and, and wisdom, can see beyond the surface to bring what is true justice and true redemption. Uh, see, sometimes we want a justice that doesn't reflect the character of God, but actually the justice we're called to seek is justice that reflects God. And if justice reflects God, it looks like all people were redeemed. It looks like love. It looks like this picture that we see where the wolf lies with the lamb, uh, the leopard lies down with the kid, the calf and the lion, the fatling together, and the little child leading them. That's what a society that has a complete justice looks like. That is... Justice, uh, when it deals with wrongdoing, deals with wrongdoing for the purpose of restored relationship. Often when I want justice, I, I just want something dealt with so, so that I can feel better. But actually, Jesus calls us, what, to love our enemies, to seek good for those who persecute us. Why, did, why is that? Because his justice looks like redemption for all people, not just the people that we would like redemption for. And, and so nursing child playing um, over the hole of the asp, uh, the weaned child putting a hand on the adder's den. Uh, redemption looks like uh, reconciled relationships for all. And so when it looks like that, justice is fulfilled in the full. full. And so we see verses 10 and 11. Uh, On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal for the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him and his dwelling shall be glorious. On that day, the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant. And so uh, God's purpose is uh, in the reconciliation, the re redemption of all things, that as redemption is seen, it's held up uh, like a banner to the people around, that people would see the, the redemptive justice of God like a, a herald of good news, that justice will be done for them, but not only them, but for all people. And so we have this beautiful picture in, in Isaiah of uh, the kind of leader that's needed to, to bring the kind of justice that God desires where everyone is at perfect peace. In uh, Psalm 72, uh, was it Psalm 72 we were looking at? Yes. Uh, in Psalm 72, uh, we, we see uh, Solomon. It's, it's written of Solomon uh, as a leader who exemplified a lot of these qualities, and yet his rule finished. And so that's when we flip right over to Matthew's gospel. And so if you're following in the Bible, we're on page 784. And uh, we're, we're looking 
hear at what God's doing to bring uh, his priority to earth. Uh, so we see in Matthew chapter 3, we have John the Baptist, and uh, we, we look at, at what he's doing in order to prepare the way for redemption. Uh, he, he's crying, you know, he's in his loincloth and he's got the bees and the honey following him. He's kind of a wild and wacky guy, but he is prophetically calling. What, what does it mean? Prophetically uh, speaking the heart of God to people and calling them to return in order to prepare the way for redemption to happen. Now we look at John and go, he's a kind of a weird guy. He has a vision of, of something coming, but we don't know what he's on about. But to them, he was an incredibly charismatic guy. There was a lot of people that were coming to see themselves restored in relationship uh, with God in order to prepare the way for this Isaiah picture to be fulfilled. And so what do we see in this? We see in this not just uh, a picture of what has happened, but a, a picture of what we are called to do in God's big plan of redemption. Uh, see, in redemption, our job is to prepare the way for redemption to continue. Uh, our job is similar to the job of John. And so if you come wearing cloth and eating honey, and <laughs> that's okay, but that, that's not the way... Uh, redemption actually happens. Redemption actually happens through people repenting. And when we repent, what we're saying is, this way of living before uh, is not the way I was called to live. These priorities that I had before are not the priorities that I called to have. This is actually the way that God calls me to live. And this is what the priority is that God calls me to have. And so often when we think about sin, it's, Oh, you, you better not touch that. You better not look at that. You better not do that. You better not say that. But, but actually, sin is, is about our alignment in life with the priorities of God. And so God doesn't redeem us from a, a former way of living in order that we may live in a way apart from him. He redeems us from a former way of living in order that we may live for him and purposes uh, of him in order to prepare that way for others to know him. And so when I look at life, and uh, I go, yeah, I, I spend a bit of time gardening, I, I spend a bit of time watering, I spend a bit of time cleaning up some things yesterday, and I, I can go, well, where are my priorities at? I, often, you know, these are essential things. Like, we, we, you have to sort out your stuff. Does that line up with the priorities of God? And as I um, was thinking yesterday and, and just thinking on where, where are the priorities of God and how, am I, how is my time fitting with the priorities of God, that's a, that's a challenging thought to really have, isn't it? Because in the world that we live in, we often have a priority on eating nice food, spending time with people we like, uh, seeing good results, uh, seeing success in business. Uh, all good things. But what's God's big priority? It's actually redemption. It's actually looking at injustice and seeing justice come. It's looking in people uh, that are both the perpetrators of injustice and the victims of injustice re restored in relationship, in, in health to God. Do I carry that as, as a priority? That's a very challenging thought to think about. And if I'm called to be a person that prepares the way for redemption in the lives uh, of others in, in, in this world, am I living that as a priority? That, that is, when you, when you sit on that thought, hugely challenging because some of the things that can occupy a lot of our time are not big picture redemption priorities and so where does repentance come in and it comes into this place of going actually god my priorities are not your priorities uh, some things just need to get done and I, I know you're not judging me for that but when my big priorities are different from yours actually 
there's a, there's a change that's required. And so repentance is coming to this place before God and saying, my former way of life is not my future way of life. And so I turn around from that way of life and walk in a new direction. And so the people that got baptized by, by John, they walked into the water, they were cleansed of their old way of living, and then they walked out to choose a different way of living in life, that in uh, relationships that they will be a redemptive people, not a, a person that's seeking justice for themselves, but redemption for others. And that's a really challenging thought, but that's actually what God calls us to, to, to seek redemption in this world, that you would uh, build a set of skills and gifts and a vocabulary and ability to re relate to people that enables them to uh, access redemption through you. I wonder how you're thinking about how you might live next week. <laughs> Where redemption could be a priority for us next week. Maybe it looks like seeing injustice and addressing injustice, being a person that speaks up in the face of injustice, a person that seeks uh, for God's uh, palingenesia, that, that is the renewal of all things. That's our job in redemption, to, to seek injustice to be dealt with and then What's required at the, at the bottom of that? What's needed is to believe. Actually, we, we believe that God in his love wants redemption for all of us. For every person that you know, every situation where you say justice has not been served there, God's heart for that is greater than your heart for justice to occur. And so we need to believe that in the face of injustice, actually, God, God wants change. And God raises not leaders, but his people to bring change. See, God's plan for the, for the world is not that he would raise up a leader other than Jesus to lead the world into a place of justice and righteousness. We know that God's plan for the world is one heart one person at a time, one life at a time redeemed. One person saying, I'm going to leave behind my former way of living and I'm going to choose a new way of living for God. That's what it looks like for us to live out his redemptive priorities in this world. So how, how does the world change redemption one person at a time? And so what does this look like for us? It means that, uh, you know, as we came to communion and we remember that we're reconciled to God through what Jesus has done for us, that his bloodshed has reconciled us, uh, made us clean, made us new. It means we're, we're not our old self, we're, we're new. And as the Holy Spirit comes to us, we, we see this beautiful picture at the end of uh, this section that we're reading in Matthew 3, so looking at verse uh, 11, John says this, he says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. He speaks of Jesus. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His purpose for us, uh, God's purpose for us is that uh, we... Uh, would be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. What, what, what does the Holy Spirit do? Uh, gives us a deep revelation of uh, where we are actually at, a realistic picture. Uh, what, what is the fire about? It's about a, a cleansing, a purifying that happens. So as we invite God to come into our lives, it, it looks like him burning off all that is impure, that we may be fruitful for him live fruitfully in his kingdom in order to achieve his purposes in this world. And so this is this beautiful picture of what God's doing in the church. He's brought redemption to you. He's empowered you to live out his redemptive purposes in this world. And he's continuing to empower you, continuing as you invite the Holy Spirit to bring a cleansing, a purifying in your heart and your life. It's great uh, joy 
that it's experienced when we get to partner with God for justice. You see, the, the joy that we are prepared to experience in Jesus is the joy that is known only as we partner with him in his priorities for us. And so we look forward with joyful expectation to how he's going to work redemption out through us. Redemption where we see injustice. Redemption uh, where we see loss. Uh, re redemption where we see hopelessness. And we need to believe in the middle of it that redemption is possible, not only for you and for me, but for the person that is far, 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 far from anything that we think that looks like that picture of unity and peace in Isaiah. So let's pray for that. Let's pray that God opens our eyes to see where it's needed and then empowers us uh, with words uh, with fire, uh, with a hunger to see him come and answer that prayer that we pray on earth as it is in heaven. So Father, thank you that as much as we have a heart for justice, your heart is greater, uh, your love is greater uh, than injustice. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would work it in this world. Uh, we pray that you would stir up hope within each of us, hope for a future where peace comes, where joy comes, where love is experienced by all, where hope is restored. Uh, Lord, as a church, uh, strengthen us uh, to have courage to live differently from this world, and Lord, where our priorities are not aligned with your priorities, bring us back into that place of peace with you. Reconcile our understanding. Give us wisdom and counsel that we would live for you. That Lord, through our work, through our relationships, uh, through our, our living in this world, we would seek your redemptive purposes. that, Lord, we will be a great example to others as we point them to you. So renew us in hope and love as we look for you to come uh, now and in the full. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.